Thank you very much. Um, my apologies for not being Lev Manovich. <laughs> second round of apologies for not being a lawyer. <laughs> a third round of apologies to some of you. I'm not in favour of the abolition of copyright, but I am in favour of copyright working in the way that it was originally designed to do uh, in uh, the digital world, but, it, but in the digital world. Um, uh, having been asked to come to Warsaw uh, to talk for 10 minutes uh, and uh, attracted by uh, the extraordinary opportunity of spending a day listening to everybody else talking, um, uh, I'm uh, of course thrown by the fact uh, that uh, Copy Camp has now asked me to give the three hour version uh, of my lecture uh, on the future of copyright. Uh, it was only going to be 10 minutes. Uh, and of course, had I known I was in an 800 seater cinema, uh, I'd have probably knocked up a slide or two as well, but I haven't done that. Um, so uh, let me just tell you a little bit uh, about um, the the work that I've done on copyright, um, which began in 2011, um, when, to my considerable surprise, I, I was asked by the uh, British government to uh, lead an independent review of intellectual property, specifically uh, with reference to its implications for innovation, growth, uh, and entrepreneurship. Um, the fact that uh, I'm not uh, a lawyer, um, I think, was probably judged an advantage uh, in that case. Uh, my, my background, although uh, these days I uh, work and teach uh, in, at Cardiff University in, uh, in Wales, which is part of the United Kingdom, um, uh, the, um, uh, the most part of my career has been in, in journalism. Uh, some of the journalistic skills came in handy uh, doing a piece of work uh, like this. Uh, and of course, uh, it, there, uh, there are probably others in the room uh, who have also ex uh, experienced, as I certainly have, the disruption uh, that the internet has caused to journalism as a profession. Uh, and uh, my own um, uh, take on uh, the future of copyright in a digital environment uh, is affected uh, by, uh, by that experience uh, as well as by uh, other, other input, inputs. So, um, we set out uh, in uh, the back end of 2011 uh, to, uh, we had five months to uh, go through the arguments uh, about copyright in the UK setting. The UK, of course, a member of the European Union, uh, so uh, all of the laws affecting uh, copyright uh, and a good deal else in the IP world uh, framed at the European level. Uh, there was a big um, discussion around uh, at the time, in fact, the Prime Minister, um, uh, David Cameron, uh, then as now, uh, when he uh, announced this review of intellectual property, uh, he um, said that someone had told him, that Google had told him, uh, that uh, Google would never have been able to get started uh, if the United States had the kind of uh, IP laws uh, that exist in the United Kingdom uh, and in Europe. Uh, that uh, immediately uh, uh, encouraged and enabled uh, everybody who was opposed to uh, copyright reform in any shape or form uh, to label uh, the review uh, the Google review, um, which uh, it wasn't. Um, uh, we, um, the argument that I made uh, it, it, it was really, in a way, quite a simple argument. Uh, the argument was that Copyright clearly was not working in the sense that uh, it declared illegal numerous things that uh, all of us do much of the time. Uh, and that uh, a set of laws uh, that is uh, so um, ineffective and unconnected to our real behavior uh, is either going to be, uh, those laws are either going to be 
uh, ignored um, uh, or uh, there is going to be pressure to change. Uh, the, the pressure for change uh, in 2011 was, of course, by no means new. Um, it, uh, it had uh, risen to various peaks of intensity, uh, but uh, one of the things that it was impossible not to notice was that uh, when uh, public and official consultations took place uh, about uh, issues like copyright and patent law and trademark and other IP laws as well, um, they were not right at the top uh, of the agenda of, for example, consumer bodies uh, or groups of users. Um, the, uh, if you think about it simply as a citizen, as a consumer, even if, uh, like me and like probably everybody in this room, uh, you love uh, what the internet allows you to do, it's not necessarily the most important thing in your life. Uh, but if you are a, a business whose business model is based upon a particular approach to rights, uh, then uh, it is the most important thing in your business life. And therefore, uh, those kinds of businesses are motivated to spend an enormous amount of effort uh, uh, making their arguments about uh, what should happen uh, to intellectual property laws. Uh, and that, um, that indeed, uh, they do. Uh, the result uh, uh, of that uh, has been, I think, that copyright reform uh, has been um, uh, somewhere between impossible uh, and impossible to do well and intelligently. Uh, and so I was, uh, I, as I became um, better informed about the situation, uh, I uh, was not fantastically optimistic uh, that uh, making uh, arguments for change would uh, be successful. Um, but, uh, of course, that didn't put me off making them. Uh, I, I decided quite early on that one thing I would do, learning from one of the uh, uh, four or five previous reviews in recent years there had been of these matters in the United Kingdom, was that I would not give the government too much choice. Uh, so I said to the uh, group of people who um, were um, provided to help me do the work uh, from the UK's Intellectual Property Office that even before we had done any of the thinking, uh, I had um, a rather uh, a bullying conclusion, which was that there would only be ten recommendations in this review. No matter what we discovered and what we came to, we'd, we'd do ten recommendations. Because if you do 50 recommendations or 100 recommendations, then the government can choose the 65 that you don't care about. Uh, so uh, we, we had ten. Uh, and I'm going to... Uh, just quickly mention uh, all ten. The other thing is, when you only have ten, you can mention all of them. Um, uh, even, even in the 20-minute version of this speech, which is what you're getting. Don't worry, the, the three-hour option was never on. Uh, uh, so, uh, the, fir the first recommendation was this. Um, it may seem surprising. It was uh, that the go government, our government, uh, should ensure that decisions that it makes about the IP system are based on evidence. Uh, now, you might say, what else is it like to be based on, you know, sort of hearsay or imagination or a joke? Um, uh, it, it, but it's a serious point because uh, there is a, a track uh, of decisions that have been made about copyright, especially with regard to its duration, uh, which really have got no justification uh, in terms of uh, their economic consequences. Uh, and uh, there is also um, a haze of data around uh, the discussion of IP, um, much of which uh, is interesting but not necessarily true. Um, uh, and even where there is data that looks as if it has been carefully presented, uh, it often falls short of the standards uh, that you would hope to find in the best evidence, namely that it's peer reviewable uh, and, uh, and, uh, and transparent in the way that it's done. So evidence, basically on evidence, uh, recommendation one. Uh, two, uh, international issues, well, the, point, the main point there was 
Uh, it's no good thinking that you can sit in the UK uh, and decide that you'd like it to be this way because uh, what you do has to fit with Europe uh, and it also has to be aware of what's going on in China and India. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it is necessarily an internationally complex matter, no matter how local some of the problems are. I mean, the problems that arise are intensely local. They're problems in families. You know, I can't put uh, that soundtrack on my child's birthday video because there isn't anybody can, I can ask for permission. And if I just do it, which is probably what uh, most people do, uh, then that's against the law. And well, you know, I'm a, you know, not a law breaking person. I don't do that kind of thing. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, international, important. Um, copyright licensing. I didn't understand uh, at the start of the work the extent to which um, uh, r the rights holding businesses would um, kind of move towards uh, and uh, very much put their own focus on arguments in favor of uh, improved licensing uh, mechanisms uh, as an alternative uh, to changing the law. Um, uh, I thought that we came up with a really great idea. I thought it was the best idea that we came up with uh, in, uh, in, in this review, which was to uh, invite the creation of something called the Digital Copyright Exchange, which now exists as the Copyright Hub. Uh, it's developing slowly. It's a prototype. Uh, I wish it were faster, but I'm glad it's doing it. Uh, and its objective uh, is to make it possible for me uh, or you, uh, when I or you uh, want to put a soundtrack on our child's uh, birthday greeting, uh, to do it legally uh, with a click. Um, uh, now, I don't think it's that uh, good yet. Uh, but uh, that is what it aspires to do. It aspires to make licensing feasible uh, in terms of process and price in the long tail of the internet. Uh, and uh, I think that that is an important part of what needs to happen. Fourth recommendation was on orphan works. Now, uh, the recommendation on orphan works was more or less a kind of exasperated sigh. You know, how can you, how can we possibly uh, think it's justified uh, to lock away this vast amount of material um, uh, uh, which is inaccessible because nobody can say for sure who owns the rights to it. Uh, since uh, the review, uh, there, have been, there have been initiatives at the European and at the UK level uh, to uh, improve access to the licensing of orphan rights. Neither of those responses uh, is strong enough. And I think that this is territory uh, where <coughs> um, the authorities, the governments, uh, need to move closer to uh, an extended collective licensing uh, sort of approach, uh, which, um, uh, w which also has uh, some things in common uh, with the idea of the creative contribution, alternative remuneration systems. Um, uh, the fifth recommendation was probably, in, in the end, uh, the most uh, complicated. Uh, I was surprised uh, to discover uh, that um, uh, within the European framework of copyright law, uh, that the UK had uh, not taken advantage of uh, most of the exceptions and limitations to copyright that exist in those laws, of which the most glaring uh, example was uh, in the UK it, it was, uh, and I'll come to why in a moment, it still is uh, illegal to uh, transfer, to copy a file that you own from one device that you own to another device that you own. That is an illegal act. Um, uh, and. Um, uh, the uh, provision of an exception uh, for that has, has now been passed in UK law but has hit some trouble in the courts because the government decided, uh, I, was in, I supported the government in doing this, uh, but, but the government decided that it would offer no compensation to rights holders for this move and that has, that has resulted uh, in, uh, uh, in a blockage 
uh, in the courts. Uh, but we, um, uh, the, the, we basically, uh, well, I, uh, I recommended uh, that the UK take up uh, uh, the flexibility offered by exceptions and limitations, uh, which the UK has done uh, on, on parody, on um, uh, text and data mining, uh, non-commercial research, uh, aspects of the education, uh, exceptions and limitations. So there's been quite a big move forward there in the UK which I think uh, probably more than any of the other changes has sort of a bit repositioned where the UK is uh, in terms of international discussion of these matters. Uh, recommendation six uh, is of less interest to CopyCamp, uh, was to do with uh, patent thickets uh, and some of the problems that result uh, for the innovation climate from that. Um, uh, I uh, made a recommendation number seven on the design industry uh, where the UK I thought had an eccentric and defective uh, approach to um, uh, rights coverage uh, for design. Uh, on uh, recommendation eight on enforcement, uh, which uh, of course uh, there was a lot of pressure uh, to uh, at that time, uh, even more than there is today, I think the pressure has abated a little uh, to um, uh, increase the strength and extent of enforcement. Uh, and uh, that, uh, 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 I'm in favor of enforcing copyright. I'm also uh, in favor of, or because I'm in favor of, having copyright uh, laws uh, operate in a way that makes them intelligible to people and intelligent in what they are uh, seeking to achieve. Uh, but it's also important uh, that those who are responsible for enforcing copyright laws um, uh, collect data about what they're doing, uh, subject it to uh, demanding uh, analysis, uh, and that therefore uh, it is smart enforcement uh, not clumsy enforcement. Uh, the ninth recommendation uh, was all about uh, small companies, uh, and uh, the tenth recommendation uh, was uh, about trying to address the very serious difficulty, which of course persists, that uh, in a uh, digital world which is changing fast all the time, uh, whatever you put into a statute uh, is not going to uh, uh, stand the test of time very successfully. Uh, so finding ways of framing law uh, uh, which makes it adaptable to new circumstances is one response to that. I think that's a, a, a job that still uh, lies ahead of us. Uh, uh, but uh, there are other things that can be done as well uh, in terms of uh, the, uh, for example, the powers that relevant institutions in the UK case, the Intellectual Property Office, have uh, their ability uh, to make it easier, not only for consumers and users uh, to um, operate within this framework of law, but also for uh, small businesses, especially startups and young businesses, uh, to uh, make a good job uh, of exploiting their rights, understanding the situation well enough uh, that they're good uh, at exploiting them. So that's the UK. Uh, the, the government, uh, uh, a little to my surprise, uh, said, uh, yes, we like this. Uh, they published a, a document saying, uh, and we're going to do it, and uh, they have set about it, and uh, through uh, a four-year process, that's, that's how long it took, uh, where Parliament had a lot to say, uh, some of it very critical, um, uh, the government uh, uh, more or less uh, stuck to the principles of the review uh, and, uh, and uh, has implemented um, what I regard really as uh, you know, standing back from it, a pretty modest, I think reasonable set of reforms uh, which uh, now um, attract a lot of attention uh, partly because um, uh, not for the first time the European Union is again gearing up to the question of so what do we do about copyright? So let's just say a couple of things uh, about, uh, about Europe before closing. Um, the, uh, the digital single market uh, is, is you know, the way the issue is named currently uh, in the European Union. Uh, and certainly my view is that if Europe 
uh, does not have uh, a boundary-free continental scale market in digital products and services, then it will put itself at a very, very serious disadvantage uh, with those that do, namely China and the United States. Uh, so uh, Europe uh, sorts this out or suffers, I think, very serious consequences. Uh, it's not a simple issue to sort out. Uh, a component of sorting it out uh, is having uh, an approach to intellectual property laws which uh, stands across the whole of the European Union. We don't have that in copyright. We've been trying to uh, achieve a unitary patent uh, system in Europe uh, for very nearly half a century. Uh, uh, and it's still not quite there. Um, so uh, there is uh, I think uh, an absence of, uh, of some urgency there, but there are, uh, there are, pre there are reformers, there are pressures to reform, uh, and it's certainly uh, too early uh, to get uh, too pessimistic about it. But it's going to be very difficult, uh, and uh, I don't know how uh, engaged um, uh, people in this room today are in that EU debate, I imagine, and I hope, quite involved. I think. Uh, it's very, uh, very, very important uh, to be involved. The, um, uh, the more radical ideas that are around, I think the creative contribution idea uh, is certainly uh, one of those, and there's a version of that which uh, I became better acquainted with uh, during a bit of time spent in Amsterdam in the summer, uh, where uh, they've been talking about trying to uh, use an internet tax to, uh, to fund uh, uh, legitimate access to, uh, to the internet at the, at the city-wide level, possibly, or at the, more ambitiously, at the level of a small country like the Netherlands. Uh, I'm, uh, I know uh, uh, very well how hard um, the resistance will be uh, from uh, rights holders who think that uh, their rights are being somehow or other um, traded uh, against their wishes uh, at prices they don't uh, control uh, in circumstances uh, that they don't control either. So it is, uh, it's a very, very big battle. Um, uh, I am uh, myself, uh, I have to admit, um, uh, I would rather try uh, to get uh, the market to do what the market can do here. Uh, and the market itself is a problem. Uh, uh, we, we have not had um, um, the right um, degree of determination uh, and um, commitment uh, on uh, running competition law in, in this area. Uh, and. I think that Europe now um, faces uh, a very, uh, very, very particular difficulty, uh, which is um, uh, tied up with, on the one hand, all that I've been talking about today, and on the other hand, I think the louder subject, the subject that makes more political noise, and therefore one has to assume gets more people worked up, uh, which is... Uh, Europe's displeasure uh, at uh, the uh, power uh, of American internet, internet platform companies uh, in Europe. Um, that is uh, a battle uh, which we have seen the European Parliament uh, uh, very active in, uh, in my own um, professional occupation uh, or former professional occupation of journalism. Uh, you see uh, a version of that argument running there uh, very, uh, very strongly. Uh, and therefore, you see um, all that we're talking about in terms of copyright getting tied up uh, in other issues uh, about uh, uh, the shape of the digital market, about competitive power, uh, allegations of market abuse. Uh, the only thing that I can say as my final word is, it were, what do we do about it? Well, uh, I think that what we do about it is, one, we try to uh, separate uh, evidence uh, from 
uh, mere complaint uh, and try and stay cool about it. Uh, and I think that we, uh, we have to um, uh, constantly ask ourselves, what are the values that we are trying to defend, promote, advance here in Europe, and how do we defend, promote, advance them? Uh, one of the things that, uh, although this is my first visit to Copy Camp, I've always loved about Copy Camp from afar, and I think I love it now I'm in the room, uh, is uh, that it, uh, it has uh, not only a passion, it has a consistency, a determination about values as, as a gathering. Uh, and boy, is that uh, uh, determination going to be needed if um, the kind of reforms that will no doubt be discussed as the day unfolds uh, are going to have any chance at all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr.